That's fantastic. Martha is a veteran, a great veteran, a great fighter, a warrior, and the first female fighter pilot to fly combat missions in American history. Think of that. She's the first. And I spoke to some of the pilots and fighters just now. We just left. We had an incredible display of talent. Boeing was there, and Raytheon was there, and they were all there. Every, everybody was there. And the ones that know Martha, they said she could fly a plane like nobody. I like that. That's good. That's good. They were very impressed. They were very impressed. You deserve a senator who truly loves your state and loves to fight for this state and who will never let you down. And that leader is indeed Martha McSally. And Martha's opponent is a far-left extremist named Kirsten Sinema. And you know, she is. She's being protected by the fake news back there. She's being... Boy, that's a lot. Look at all the people. It's like the Academy Awards. Today. Look at this. That's a lot of stuff. You think this happens to the average president? No way. And every single time, I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Uh, you can turn the cameras back on. I won't say anything bad, I promise. Now, when they think I'm ready to say something bad, all those red lights go off. You know, just now I turn them. I'm not going to, I'm going to leave you alone. After 9 11, Martha McSally heroically led airstrikes against radical Islamic terrorists. Very successful. But while Martha was bravely fighting the Taliban, Kirsten Sinema said she had no problems with Americans defecting from our country to join the Taliban. How does that happen? Seriously, how does that happen in Arizona? Explain that one to me. Cinema made these comments even as courageous American service members were giving their lives in the fight against enemy Taliban forces. Kirsten Cinema also embraced a left-wing radical who was convicted of providing material support to terrorists. This is what you want as your senator? I don't think so. I don't think so. And as you know, and as you just heard, Kirsten Sinema voted strongly against tax cuts. Now, not because she believes that, but because Nancy Pelosi told her to do it. That's all it is. Nancy Pelosi doesn't believe it. And Maxine Waters told her to do it, too. It's true. I, she doesn't believe that, but they told her to do it. They'll do, she'll do whatever they tell her. She voted for Obama's amnesty and she voted against the border wall. She wants to let poisonous drugs pour into your communities, and that's where they're coming, right through. Cinema voted to support deadly sanctuary cities, and Cinema joined the shameful Democrat mob attacking the great Justice Brett Kavanaugh. He will be great. He'll be a great Supreme Court justice. And a vote for Kirsten Cinema is a wasted vote, but more importantly, it's a dangerous vote because it's for Schumer, Gray and Chuck, for Pelosi, and for Maxine Waters. If you don't want radical Democratic mob to control Congress, vote today. Get out and vote before the You don't have to wait. Vote for Martha McSally. It'll be one of the best votes you've ever cast. It will be. It will be the second greatest vote you ever cast. The first greatest vote was for me. Me. Now, when you cast the vote for me, you cast the vote for you, too. It's us. Because we have, and they never question me on this. I say it all the time. We have the greatest movement in the history of our country. It's never happened. It's never happened before. And we're doing great, the greatest president. Thank you. I like him. But look, who said that? Thank you, man. Thank you. We're working hard. We're working hard. Democrats in Congress have already signed up for a socialist takeover of health care that would eliminate the private health insurance of 3.4 million 
Arizona residents. You know about that. And it's going to destroy our country, and your taxes will be tripled. The Democrat plan would destroy Medicare and terminate Medicare Advantage for over a half a million Arizona seniors who depend on it. Democrats' plan to kill Medicare Advantage is especially unfair to Hispanic Americans, of which we have a couple in the room, right? Couple. We're doing very well with Hispanic Americans. Doing very well. Because you know what? They want safety at the border. They want great jobs. Remember the last election? Well, he won't do too well with a Hispanic vote. Did we do well or what? They're still, they're still, they're still trying to figure it out. And remember they said, oh, but he won't do well with women. Did we do well with women? We did well with women. They haven't figured it out yet, they're, but they're trying. Are you trying? Do you continue, or do you just want to play this game? Do you want to keep playing this game? One out of every two Hispanic seniors is enrolled in Medicare Advantage, which they're going to destroy. Republicans want to protect Medicare for our great seniors who have earned it, and they paid for it. And Republicans will always protect patients with pre existing conditions. They're trying to put a false narrative out there. And if there is a Republican out there that doesn't, let me know. I'll believe me, him or her, we'll talk him into it. We're going to protect pre existing conditions. Just put it down and bank. Remember during the debates, everyone wanted to readjust your Social Security. Let's add some years on. Let's. Who was the one person that said, I'm not touching entitlements? Thank you. Thank you. And remember I said, right? And I haven't. I haven't. There's been a lot of presidents that made big promises. All of a sudden, their career is over. You know, you know a few of them. You've watched it. And it's not a pretty sight when it happens. It's not pretty at all. Not going to happen to me. But I was on stage during all those debates, which we won, by the way, every single one of them. But I was on stage with all those debates, first with some really fine people, the Republicans, and then with a very dishonest person, crooked Hillary Clinton. And during that time, and dur It is amazing how you can delete 33,000 emails after getting a subpoena from the United States Congress, and our Justice Department doesn't do anything about it. It is pretty amazing. Our Justice Department, headed by many people from the Obama administration. Can't win them all, but it'll all work out, folks. It'll all work out. Just like you look at what we've done, you look at every department, you look at what's going on, Secretary of State, you look at EPA, you look at everyone. We are doing so well, we are really hitting. The new platform of the Democrat Party is radical socialism and open borders. As we speak, the Democrat Party is openly inviting millions of illegal aliens to break our laws, violate our borders, and overwhelm our nation. Other than that, the Democrats are doing a great job, right? <laughs> Not too good. You know what? They're lousy politicians. They have horrible policy. They do one thing well. They stick together. They really do. They stick together better than the Republicans. The one thing they do and they stick. They don't want us to have the victory of a wall, even though we got much more money for our military, many, many times more. We got money, but they don't want us to have the wall, even though they know it's the right thing. They will fight to the death because they don't want us to have the wall, but we've started the wall anyway, and we're going to get that done. We're going to get it done. And now it's as a point, when you look, it's really at a point 
when you look at what's pouring over in these caravans, when they start saying, we don't want to change those immigration laws that are so bad, catch and release, we don't want to change visa lottery. Think of visa lottery. They pick names out of a hat. Visa lottery, think about it. Do you think that this country, or whichever country it is, are they going to put you, are they going to put their finest in there? I don't think so. I don't think so. Chain migration, you come over and then they have, we had a guy on the West Side Highway. He goes down the highway. He's going 60, 70 miles an hour. Radical Islam, terrible. Makes a right turn into a park. Kills nine people, badly injures that nobody ever talks about. People that are running along the beautiful Hudson River because they want to stay in shape, they end up going home six months later with no legs, with no arms, because of people like this, sick people. These are sick people. And they's allowed, this guy had 22 people. He brought in his mother, his father, his brother, his sisters, his aunts, his uncles, because of Democrats' policy. That's called chain migration. It's a chain. Sounds so good. Like right out of like right out of school. Sounds so beautiful. The chain. Everyone comes together. Nope. We're ending it, folks. And the Democrats don't want to do it, but we're ending it, folks. And catch and release. How about that? That's my favorite. Catch. You catch a damn killer. You catch a bad hombre. You catch a bad one. You take the name, and we're supposed to bring them to court. But we have hundreds of thousands of people, and it's all my fault. You know why? Because we, I, you, all together, we've made this country so strong economically, so good, jobs, everything that everybody wants to come in, so it's my fault. But you know what? We're not letting them in. We only are going to let people in based on merit. We need people to come in based on merit. So you have catch and release. They put one foot. They don't need to. One foot. We have the greatest people, ICE, Border Patrol, law enforcement. And the law doesn't allow us to throw them the hell out. We have to take them. We have to write them up. And then we say, come back in three years for a court case. In the meantime, they're released into our society. And you know what the percentage of people that come back for the case? Three percent. No, you're wrong. He said zero. You were slightly off. Three percent. Three percent show up three years, four years, five years later. It's a disgrace, and the Democrats do it. And we don't have enough votes, we don't have enough Republicans to override their negative vote, because they do stick together. And remember this, they're only sticking together because they want to make sure that I and we don't get what they know our country needs. But I think they may be forced politically to do it, because I got to tell you, Anybody that votes for a Democrat now is crazy. When you look at what's coming up, crazy. Got to be crazy. The Democrats don't care about what their extremist immigration agenda will do to your communities, your hospitals. How about your hospitals? They're being overrun. Your schools. California, they want to give you free education, free health care, open borders. I mean, we're going to have 10 million people move to California. This is the craziest thing. So here's what we do. Let's get these people out of there. There's something wrong. They're cuckoo. The Democrats don't care that a flood of illegal immigration is going to totally bankrupt our country, because all the Democrats want is power. And don't forget, everybody that comes across the border, for the most part, they're going to vote Democrat. They're not voting Republican. They're going to vote Democrat. So nobody said they're stupid, but it's bad for our country. But they're going to vote Democrat. No matter what we do, they will be voting Democrat. And they understand that. That's why Democrats support programs like catch and release. That's why Democrats want to give illegal aliens free welfare, 
free health care and free education. Give them a driver's license. Give them a driver's license. Next thing you know, they'll want to buy them a car. Then they'll say the car's not good enough. We want, how about a Rolls Royce? Give a, we want a Rolls Royce. Made not in America, so therefore, I hope that's not what we do. That's why Democrats want to give illegal immigrants the right to vote. How about in California, where illegal immigrants took over the town council, and now the town council is run by illegal immigrants in a town? I mean, is this even believable? You tell this stuff. It is sick. That's why Democrats want to abolish ICE, the most brave people. These people, I wouldn't want their job. Nobody up here wants their job, I can tell by looking. They go into the toughest situations. We call them nests. Nests are very bad people. They don't like using guns. They'd much rather use knives because it's much more painful and slower. These are really bad people. And ICE goes in there, and it's like a day at the office. No problem. And they free towns, like in Long Island. They liberate towns. It's like liberation from a war. They liberate towns. And the Democrats think that ICE isn't nice. We have to get rid of ICE. We cherish ICE, and we cherish Border Patrol, and we cherish our law enforcement. The casualties in the Democrats' open borders crusade are innocent American families and lives. And we have some of these incredible people with us tonight. Democrat immigration policies allow poisonous drugs, vicious gang members, and MS-13 killers to pour into our country. And we've done a great job. We have removed thousands of MS-13. Get them the hell out. Thousands, thousands and thousands. And Democrat sanctuary cities release dangerous predators out of a jail and straight into your communities. This is not what you want. I know the people of Arizona. You don't want, you don't want it. A Democrat victory in November would be a bright, flashing invitation to every trafficker, smuggler, drug dealer, and illegal alien on the planet. Come on in. Come on in, folks. A Republican victory would send the message that America will enforce our borders and defend our citizens. Yeah. Important. This is your choice in November. This is your real choice. I don't think personally, I don't think you have a choice, but what am I? How can I say that? You're supposed to vote. I don't think you have a choice, okay? I know the people in this room too well. Democrats believe illegal border crossers should be immediately set free. Republicans believe illegal border crossers should be immediately sent home or, if they're criminals, put in jail. <laughs> Democrats believe our country should be a giant sanctuary city for criminal aliens. They want it to be a big, fat, beautiful sanctuary city, the whole country, for criminal aliens. Republicans believe our country should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans. <laughs> Democrats believe American taxpayers should provide free welfare to illegals. That's wonderful. How about California? They owe Two million trillion dollars. They owe more money than any place has ever even dreamt of. And now they have a man running for governor who wants to actually let the entire world pour into his state, give him free welfare, free education, free licenses, free everything. And they have no money. And they have no money, and they owe a fortune. Other than that, it's a great idea. Republicans believe welfare should be protected for truly needy Americans that need it. If you want to save your country, if you want to protect your family, if you want to defend American laws, the borders, the sovereignty, the dignity, then you must vote for Martha and vote for Republican on November 6th or before.
This election is also about prosperity. In less than two years, we have created over 4.2 million new jobs and lifted over 4 million Americans off of food stamps. Think of that. Hispanic American household income is at an all-time high. Who is a Hispanic American in this room? 10 percent. It's all right. Do you like Trump? It's always dangerous. <laughs> always dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. Hispanic American poverty has reached an all-time historic low. Hispanic American unemployment has reached its lowest rate ever recorded in history. African American and Asian American unemployment have reached their lowest rates ever recorded in the history of our country. And women's unemployment at 3.6% is the lowest it's been in 65 years. Every day we are living by our motto, promises made, promises kept. And some of the fake news, and they know, they say that I made promises and I actually kept more promises than I made. I think we've done more than we've even said. And we're not finished. We're not finished yet. We're not finished. Two weeks ago, I announced that we are replacing the horrible, disgusting, terrible, terrible NAFTA deal with an incredible brand new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. The USMCA, all done. Great deal. Got to be approved by Congress, but even the Democrats like it. Can you believe that? Can you believe it? Chuck Schumer actually said really good things about Can you believe it? It'll be approved pretty quickly, and that it opens up Canada and Mexico to the farmers and to manufacturers. It's a great thing for hopefully all three countries, but this is going to be a great deal. NAFTA was a disaster. We've taken the toughest ever action to crack down on China's highly abusive trade practices. And we're winning. We're winning. And Republicans passed the biggest package of tax cuts and tax reforms in American history, including Anwar in Alaska. They couldn't get it passed. The biggest site drilling, biggest site just about in the world, just about in the world. And President Reagan really tried. Great guy. Couldn't get it done. President Bush, all of them. And I got it done. I got it done. Alaska. The people in Alaska like me. Well, my grandfather spent a lot of time in Alaska. He was looking for gold. Wasn't so easy to find, but he was looking. We also passed Veterans Choice for our great, great, great people, giving our veterans the right to see a private doctor and the landmark VA accountability law to ensure anyone who mistreats or hurts our veterans in any way is accountable. We look at them and we say, Jim, sorry to do this. You're fired. Get your ass out of here. Couldn't fire him. You couldn't fire him. We were stuck. We secured $700 billion, and then next year, $716 billion to fully rebuild our great American military. And our military will very shortly be far stronger, far more powerful, modern, the best in the world, and also its jobs. Now, when it comes to the military, I don't care about the job so much. I want the strong military. But as a secondary benefit, every ounce of it is built in the United States. And we make 
the best planes and the best ships and the best rockets and missiles. We make the best stuff. So it's a lot of jobs. And we will soon have far and away the strongest military that we've ever had. And hopefully, you know what? It'll be so strong and so powerful that we won't have to use it, okay? If it wasn't powerful, we probably would have to use it. That's the way life works. At my direction, the Pentagon is now working to create a sixth branch of the American Armed Forces called the Space Force. Very serious. Very serious. I withdrew the United States from the horrible one-sided Iran nuclear deal. A disaster. And you remember, a day before I came into office, it looked like Iran was just going to take over the Middle East. There was no stopping them. Guess what? They're struggling right now. They're really struggling. They're having riots every weekend. They are struggling right now. They are having a hard time. And we've recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. Together, we have made extraordinary progress. The progress that we've made is, I think, unparalleled, certainly for the first two years. And, you know, we're still quite a bit short. We have a ways to go, January 20th. We have a ways to go. But nobody has done more than we've done in the first two years, and not even close. And we're just getting started. If you vote to elect, a Republican House and a Republican Senate, we will continue to cut your taxes, cut your regulations, and raise your incomes. We will protect Medicare and Social Security. And Democrats will destroy them both, and you know it. We will continue to confirm judges who interpret our Constitution as written. We will secure the border. We will pass Kate's law. We will end sanctuary cities. Stop catch and release, visa lottery, chain migration out. And we will keep the criminals, drug dealers, and terrorists the hell out of our country. We will lift millions of our citizens from welfare to work, dependence to independence, and poverty to prosperity. For years, you watched as your leaders apologized for America, right? Remember? Remember, remember the bowing? All the bowing. People forget about the bowing. I remember. I didn't like it. All the bowing. Now you have a president who is standing up for America. We're standing up for your values. We're standing up for the people of Arizona. We are proudly standing up for our great national anthem. But to continue this incredible momentum, to defend your state and your country, I need you to get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your co-workers, and get out and vote for Martha McSally, November 6th is the latest, but vote early. Martha's a courageous fighter. She's the person you need in Washington. You will be so proud of her. She loves this state so much. You will be, seriously, you will be so proud of her. A vote, thank you. <laughs> she said, I'm proud of you, too. A vote, that's right. People always said, oh, this is going to be an easy job. Nothing easy about it, folks. That's right. Nothing easy. But we love it. You know why we love it? They just asked me recently, do you like it? It's hard. I said, it's only hard because I choose to work 24 hours a day. I could make it easy. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this. But you know why I love it? 
because we are accomplishing so much far greater than anybody ever thought, including them. And they give us credit for it. They have been. They have been. A vote for a Republican Congress is a vote for more jobs, more wealth, and more products made right here in the USA. That's what we want. Remember? It's a vote to respect our laws and respect the heroes of law enforcement. And a vote for Republicans is a vote to reject the Democrat politics of hatred, anger, and division, and to celebrate the greatness and the glory of being an American. And it is. It's great and it's glorious. Loyal citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country, returning power to you, the American people, and that's happening. From Phoenix to Flagstaff, from Mesa to Yuma, to the Red Rocks of Sedona, this great state was settled by some of the toughest men and toughest and most beautiful women ever to walk the face of the earth. Now, they're going to say tomorrow, he called women beautiful. Isn't that terrible? It'll be, Trump calls women beautiful. You're beautiful. You are beautiful. Beautiful. You always were, and you always will be. That is funny. I'm thinking, I'm just watching this. I think we got him. I think we got him. I think we got him. You're beautiful. Arizona is where Wyatt Earp became a legend, where the American West became the American dream, and where generations of farmers, ranchers, pioneers, and soldiers used their own two hands to build a life and to build a home. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of luxury. But they all had one thing in common. They loved their families, they loved their country, and they loved their God. These courageous Arizona patriots did not shed their blood, sweat, and tears so that we could sit at home while others tried to erase their legacy and destroy our proud American heritage. For the sake of our freedom and for the sake of our children, we are going to work, we are going to fight, and we are going to win, win, win. We will not bend. We will not break. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never, ever, ever back down. We will never surrender. And we will always fight on to victory. Always. Because we are American, and our hearts bleed red, white, and blue. We are one people one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the proud people of Arizona, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Arizona. Thank you. Thank you.